week we're gonna start with, today we're gonna start with, uh, um, Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26. Let me tell you, when we pray, things happen. Things change. And you wonder how. Things change and God fights your battles. You can see the enemy like with an open mouth trying to eat you up. But because of prayer, God stops the enemy right there in front of you. You will see the trouble, but the trouble is not going to consume you because you're a child of God. Hallelujah. Ah, come on, somebody say amen. amen. Say, I'm a child of God. Romans 8.26. Romans 8.26. If you're there, say amen. amen. We are together in church. Don't be afraid to say amen. Say amen. amen. 8.26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. With groanings that cannot be uttered. As we ought. We don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Yet God tells us pray. Otherwise we would be like, ah, oh, you know, the Holy Spirit says, don't, you don't have to pray. Because the Holy Spirit says he's going to pray for you. But God tells us to pray. Because once you begin to pray, then the Holy Spirit comes in. If you don't pray, the Holy Spirit doesn't come in. Because the Bible says, helps. He doesn't say, stops you from praying so the Holy Spirit can pray. The Holy Spirit, as you begin to pray, he comes in to help. So even this morning, as we're going to be interceding and praying, because this month is a month of prayer, and the devil hates prayer. Because that's the weapon God has given us. For the weapons of our affair are not carnal, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Which are those weapons? Those are the prayers we pray. Whenever you pray, you don't pray for what you see outside. You pray, and the, as you pray, those words become weaponized by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit begins to help us. Do you know a paper? We used to play this paper, airplane paper. You get a paper, if you don't fold it, it doesn't fly. But if you fold it, you push it, you remember? It used to fly and then go around the class and the teacher is teaching and then the teacher says, who did that? And everybody refuses to answer. How many boys did that in class? You don't remember that? The small paper, you make an airplane and zoo and it goes around. Sometimes it hits the teacher or hits your friend. We used to do that. But if you don't fold that paper, it, it won't fly. It will stay there. But if you fold it and make it to, into a, a, an airplane, you give it wings where the air is going to lift it up. Because that's, that's the, the science behind flying. The air fly, hits the wings and then you fly. So likewise, the paper we do, that's the concept. You, you, you fold it and then you make wings and you throw it. And as you throw it, it goes, the wind beneath its wings begins to make it to fly. It's just a mere paper. Paper like this. You fold it, you throw it. You two are like that. We are like that. If you don't position yourself to fly into prayer, you stay there. You have to Make yourself have wings and then let the Holy Spirit help you, push you. We don't know how we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit helps us. Praise the Lord. So that that wind goes beneath your wings. The Holy Spirit is the wind. And then it makes you fly. So your weaknesses become strength. Because the Bible says, for the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. We don't know how we ought to pray. And it gets into our groaning. As you pray, God intercedes and say, hear your children. 
They are crying for salvation. They are crying for healing. They are crying for the healing of the nation. They are crying for forgiveness. They are crying for blessings. They are crying for a breakthrough. They are crying for a building. Lord, hear your, your children. Hear them as they cry to you. Now, talk about yourself. Say, I need to do something about myself, about prayer. I need to position myself so that God will meet me. The Holy Spirit will meet me right there when I'm beginning to pray. When you feel weak, continue. When you feel like you, you have to plan. Do you know that once you say I'm going to get a job, you, you begin to plan for it? Huh? You prepare. You prepare your words. You go for the interview. You do all that. Because you're going to another level. You're going to be a job from jobless to being hired or having a job. Amen. Even in prayer, you cannot say, Lord, I didn't feel like praying today. Did you prepare? Did you plan? God is saying, you have to plan. Even with prayer, you have to plan. It's not religion to plan. You have to say, I have set time for prayer. And guess what? The time you set for prayer, you're going to see the devil fighting like never before. You, you, if, you, if you say, I'm going to pray at, at 8. Every day. You set your table. You put your Bible there. Hmm. And guess what? The things that are, not, that are going to distract you are not going to be so evil. They're going to be the ordinary things. Your children, your children are not, are not evil. They are not. They are blessed children. But then they will come in. I said, Mommy, I want this. Daddy, I want this. I said, Man, I was prepared to pray. And then as you say, Okay, let me go get you your drink. You prepare, or they want milk or cereal. As you prepare, and then there's an unimportant phone call. Somebody who says, Please, could you pray for me? Oh, uh, can you give me the charge for the address? Oh, that is good. But you set this time for prayer. You can answer that afterwards. You know, the devil, all the time we, bl we blame the devil. You know that I want to pray. But this devil, come on, you did not plan. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this month we have planned. We're going to pray. You have to set the time. You cannot say, I'm getting, you say, oops, oh, even today I didn't pray. For example, we have, uh, you know, just Jeremy. Jeremy is, is, we are trying to take out one teeth. There's one growing behind, so we're trying to take, so we shake it. But sometimes I go in bed, I'm like, oh my goodness, I forgot to shake the boy's, boy's teeth. Tooth, sorry, one. I forgot to shake it. I'm like, man, I didn't, so now, I have to, I'm, I'm planning to set the alarm now. Seriously. Uh, because the other one came out easily, but this one is taking longer, and every time you shake it, you take two days, you go back, it's hard and firmer. More, more stronger. You're like, man, did I even touch it? I said, Jeremy, why didn't you remind me? Are you blaming Jeremy to remind you? Seriously? Because you did not what? We, even for prayer, we have to plan. Plan and read your Bible and put it there. There's a man in the Bible, 1 Kings chapter 18. He planned, he said, these people, Ahab and his people, are refusing to obey the God that I serve, King, uh, Prophet Elijah. He said, let's plan for something. You have your own altar. Let me have my own altar. Let's get a bull. Not, we're not talking about just a small animal. A bull. How many of you have seen bulls? Big ones. You cut your own, I cut my own. First Kings 18. If you can go read it. And after you can put your bull on your altar, I can put mine on altar. You first pray. The Bible says they prayed all day. All night. Prophet Elijah started blaming them, you know, joking with them, teasing them. Maybe your God is sleeping, pray more. Maybe you have to do something special. Give me, do, you know, maybe drink some milk, maybe drink some water, maybe do work. Nothing. Then they gave up. They said, now you can call on your God. Prophet Elijah said, this is my moment. I planned for it. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray like never before. Hey! He cried to God. He said, my God! And the fire came from above. Katonda sobolo kuchuse miti majaba ntusenga tusaba. Amen? 
God can change, can remove the the, the stony heart and put the hearts of flesh. Katonda, <laughs> And the God who answers by fire, he is God. He will be God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. The God who answers by fire will be God. If God doesn't answer by fire, then that's not your God. And that's not the God we should worship. It is time, church, for us to cry out to our God until when God does something tangible that the world is going to see that the people will begin to change their hearts and come to our God. Our prayers have to go to another level. Not just praying for things. We need to call on God. Let him come down with fire. Because when he comes down with fire, the world, the evil people, those who have refused to turn away from their evil ways, will turn around and repent their evil ways and come to God. And that's why we are here as a church, hallelujah, to preach the gospel, not just to come here to be blessed, but to preach the gospel so that we can spread the word before Jesus comes back. But we need to go to another level of prayer. God is calling us this month, pray like never before, cry out to God, set up an altar in your house and prepare it. Don't just say, oh Lord, when you remind me, I'll pray. No, be ready, prepare yourself. Say so maybe in the morning before you wake up. Before you go to work, pray. Set up a time this month and say, Lord, I'm going to pray. It will be this table or it is going to be in my kitchen. Maybe it's in the kitchen. Maybe when you're cooking, you can say, Lord, I'll be too busy, but I'm going to be praying. Every day I'm going to be reading one psalm. Psalm 34, Psalm 30, Psalm 30, 25, 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down beside Green pastures. Walk beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your Lord and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll do what? I'll, I'll fear no evil. So you begin to pray. You begin those prayers. Hey, let me tell you, God can hear prayers and God can answer and God will answer us. But we have to prepare. You have to raise up the notch. Let me tell you, every level you go to, there's a new challenge. If you want to be blessed, if, for example, if you want to be, if you're at, at work and they say you're going to be a supervisor, do you know that every level has its new level of challenges? There are going to be more people criticizing you than you being down here. If you want to go for new blessings, you have to also to raise up a level of prayer. You cannot be the same. You can't say, oh Lord bless me. You have to, you have to come out and testify. When I obeyed God, when I prayed more, when I prepared myself, God answered me. That's a testimony. That's something that's going to change somebody because it came from real life. Like Elijah, he said, when I called on my God, they failed, but my God answered me. That's the difference of preparing. Elijah did not just sit down. Oh, maybe God will come down and wake these people up. No, Elijah said, it's time to change the course from weakness to strength. From just being a, a mere person to somebody who's going to be recognized as a leader, as, as a blessed person. Come on, somebody say amen. 
If you are afraid of being criticized, of challenges, of being rebuked, then you never go to another level. But the day you say, Lord, I'm ready for all that, then you prepare. Hey, hey, hallelujah. You prepare your heart. You say, I'm ready to be a leader. Ask some supervisors. If you're a supervisor, oh, you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged because, but if you're not a supervisor, you just do your work and you go. But if you're a supervisor, then you, are, you, are, you, are, you have so many people. Some people are going to say, oh, you're good. Some people are going to say, oh, you're terrible. Some people, we don't like you. Some people like you. All oh, that, any level you go to, there's a new level of challenges. You try to be the president. You're going to see the what you got on, on Facebook. You're going to see a thousand people who like you. And then you're going to see 5,000 people who say negative things you don't know about. Because you became. But if you don't like that, you stay on that level. Follow all the time. But if you want to be a leader, say, Lord, it is time for these people to know that I serve you. Then you have to raise up the notch. Your prayer has to change. Your fasting has to change. The way you seek God has to change. The way you love people has to change. The way you communicate has to change. Come on, somebody, we have to raise up the notch. Our God can ask, if you decide and say, Lord, I'm ready, then God will empower you and God will weaponize you. But if you sit down there, you'll be there forever and ever. If you need a better job, then you look for it. But it's not going to just to come. It's, it's not that people, nobody's going to look for you and say, oh, you're so looking, you're good looking, you're so beautiful. We're going to give you this job. No, they're going to say, okay, you're beautiful, but we need to know where's your resume. What have you done before? Huh? Have you ever been a manager or not? What are your credentials? What are your certificates? What are your degrees? What is your experience? Because they don't take you because of your lookings. They take you because of what you are capable of doing. God is wanting, is asking us, what are you capable of doing? Tell him, say, God, I feel I want to be like this. Then God is going to tell you, then show me that you are ready for that. Let your prayer change. Hello? Let your prayer change. If you want to start driving, then start practicing to drive. If you don't want to drive, then just go for Uber all the time. Or Lyft. Or buses. Or taxis. I have my sister, she's in London, she's been there I think 25 years. She, never, she has never owned a car. That's my sister that I follow. She doesn't like cars. She, everybody begs her, she say. Buses and trains are comfortable for me. She has had children on buses and trains. She has a good job, but she has hated cars. She doesn't drive. I say, as long as you want to be like that, you'll be like that. But if you want to raise up and drive a car, you have to go to the school and, and learn how to drive. Then you'll go there. Then, then you're going to have my car. In Uganda, we call them what? My car. If you are in a taxi, nobody calls you my car. But if you want, even in Uganda, people used to show the keys always in their hand. They are swinging in. They have to show you my car. These days, who cares? Raise up the standard. Somebody turned to your neighbor and said, neighbor, raise up your standard. Say, there's a seed in you. There's a gift in you. There's a blessing in you. That hasn't been tapped yet. But if you pray more, it shall come out. Ask your neighbor, do you believe it? Something in you has to come out. Do you believe it? It has to come out with prayer. Do you believe it? It has to come out with intercession. Do you believe it? This church, we have come a long way. But we are even going further and further and further in Jesus' mighty name. There are things we've prayed for and God has answered. Yesterday I was on YouTube and I could see people because they saw the testimony of Sister Betty and other people. There's people were writing and saying, please also pray for me. I uh, have this issue. Pray for me. They are just, they, 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 they see those videos and they, and they are making comments. Pray for me. Pray for me. Because we are raising up. We are, we've been, we are calling on God and God is answering us. There are things you are praying for. God is going to answer you and then people are going to come to you. How did you do it? Pray for me too. Pray for me too. But if you stand there, you don't change your prayers. Huh? You don't, you, you're, you're scared of challenges. You'll be there. Always. My sister, she's 25 years catching a bus. She's okay with it. That's you. That's fine. 
But if you want to go on another higher level, face the challenge. Hallelujah. Challenge yourself. Praise the Lord. Go to school. Challenge yourself. Go to another level. Do something. When you come out, you're going to tell them, the Lord who answers by fire has answered me. Oh. Praise the Lord. And now, verse 36, it came to pass at the time of the offering evening, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Israel. Today we're going to call on the same God. We're going to say, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Israel, let it be known this day that you are a God in Israel. Let it be known today that you are a God who called me, that I'm your servant, that I have done all these things at your word. Jeremiah 33, call unto me and see if I will not show you great and mighty things that you have never seen before. Bandange, bintu biolabye, mukama bwa gamandi nkabirida. Biolabye to si bya gendo kuwa. Sima nyo mpulira. Ah? Biolabye si bya gendo kola chi. Waluo mukama bya gendo kukuwa. Na kulio kumbya kwati bwo hujja. Mukama afye bazibwe. Ngabwa kubuzo mugamba premo, the only answer you join mugamba premo. Na mukama achikose, there is something God is about to do. When we pray more, when he answers by fire. I'm not talking about your enemies. For your enemies, God is going to take care of them. But I'm talking about your friend who is going to wonder and say, really? How come? I'm always walking with you. I'm always talking with you. How come you're becoming better? You tell them, you know why? I prepared myself. I set my heart to pray. And God has answered me. The God who answers by fire. Hey, the God of Jacob of Isaac and Abraham. The God of Sadrach, Messiah, and Abednego. The God of Elijah. The God of Elisha has answered by fire. That's why you see this difference in me. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Verse 37, he said, hear me, Lord. Hear me that these people may know that you are the Lord God. That you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire. Pew, verse 38. Then the fire. Then the fire fell and consumed and burnt the sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and it licked up the water that was under the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell. They fell. Why? Because they saw the glory of God. But then Jagala could jump away, Katonda will be Katonda Chip was seen that Bajakuja, Gotofa, Yo, Gain a mass or Sabe, Lini Sedala, Katonda, Wana Somurio, Bajakuja, Gamba Kurina, Yabaka, and Dakuja, Makama favors the way. Baga and Dakugonda, Abakuo, Zuaga and Dakugonda. Lord, I'm praying for the fire today as we pray. Ha, ha, hallelujah. Because people are going to fall down on their faces. You hear what they said in verse 39. They said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is God. Hallelujah. He's good and he's God. Hallelujah. He, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Hallelujah. The Lord is God. Nizo kulaba katonda sano akano muliro. Katonda kano muliro. Hallelujah. Nize katonda kano muliro achikole. Kwe kusaba kwange. Daya wakategeka. Na wano wanyin tukenda kusaba. Nyesoko daya wakokolechi. Utegeke. Tegeka yaka meza. Tegeka yu. 
Obuliri wao buteke ke. Obo inaka tokote kawa nsofu kamire. Ogamenti mukama nete kese guno mwesi. Waberewe chenja ulo. Mukama feba ziwe. Katona inacha yogira nafe. Romans 8, 26. He has said, the Holy Spirit will come. We will come. The Holy Spirit will come and intercede with you and lift you up. We will never be the same. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Jesus. 
Musa Chiri wanu Meme Meme Meange Ibo Limba Puri Rechisa Puri Rechisa Chiri wanu Puri Ramani Puri Ramani Gali wanu Puri Ramani Da Yesu Lord. 